Google search GMAT point daily targets, click on the first link. Here, you can take short GMAT tests for free in an exam interface. After submitting your test, you can view detailed video solutions. These tests are taken by thousands of students worldwide. Start your preparation by taking these tests today. Hi friends, welcome to GMAT Points videos. I'm Saili Kali. In this video, we'll be discussing the definition of percentages. So essentially in this video, I'll be covering what are percentages and how you should actually intuitively think of them. So let's begin. What are percentages? Why do you need percentages? You would have come across percentages in your marks. You uh, Somebody scored 80% of marks or somebody scored 90% of the marks or uh, somebody got 80% of the questions correct or even like in scores and sports, we have a lot of uh, percentages that are thrown to us. For example, in soccer, you have uh, that they had possession 80% of the time or these uh, guys had possession 20% of the time. So why are percentages essentially used? Percentages are essentially fractions which are standardized so that it is easier to compare. Instead of saying that uh, team A had uh, possession 6 7th of the time and team B had possession 1 7th of the time, that would be difficult for you to compare across games, right? So instead of doing that, to standardize the idea how much, per, how much each is, uh, instead of taking a fraction with a variable denominator, you consider all fractions where the denominator is 100. So, percent is basically stands for per cent that is per hundred. So, that basically means that x percent is basically the fractions x by hundred. So, when you say that these people had eight possession of the ball 80 percent of the time or this person scored 80 percent marks, that means that the, this person scored 80 out of hundred of the total marks that are there. But instead of saying uh, uh, any fraction you standardize uh, by saying that this is 80 out of 100 because if you consider it this way okay I scored uh, 3 out of 4 of the total marks and this person scored uh, 17 out of 20 of the total marks. Now that would be very confusing if you have different denominators and different numerators. How would you compare and say who scored more who scored less it would take a lot of time for you to compare especially if you had a long list of uh, people and uh, whose marks you have to compare. So in that case what they decided what uh, would make sense is that you compare everyone by saying what is the percentage of the total marks. So even if the total marks change the percentage of the total marks would indicate how well you have done in the exam. So whether you have 80% uh, of 300 marks or you have 90% of 100 marks you can say that okay this person scored 90% this person scored 80% so this person has done better in the exam that he gave than this person did on average. So when you are comparing you are essentially saying that uh, the percent would be of different values uh, but you are essentially standardizing the fractional part of it. You are saying that you will be only discussing where the denominator is 100 so it becomes easy for you to compare. Now again percentages are defined as percentages of something. So the total value or the absolute value will be different. When you convert percentage to an absolute number, it might be very different from what you are comparing. So even if you say 80%, if it is 80% of say $100, 80% of $100 is $80. But if you say that it is 30%, but 30% of $10,000, if you consider 30% of $10,000, how much would this be? This would be $3,000. So though 80% is greater than 30%, you have to always say that percentages are defined as percentages of something and this value also matters. So whenever you are comparing percentages, don't get confused. 80% is not necessarily greater than 30%. It depends on what it is a 80% of. 80% of X and 30% of Y. X and Y, their relationship also matters. If X is greater than Y, then you can say that 80% of X is greater than 30% of Y. But if X is less than Y, you cannot really say which part or which uh, uh, this is greater. So think of it as fractions, a standardized fraction as a way. So you can easily compare across different things. If you have percentages of the same value, you can clearly say that, okay, 60% of X will be greater than 30% of X. Instead of having fractional values, you can clearly compare that 60% of X will be 60 by 100 of X, which is greater than 30 by 100 of X. So this standardizes and reduces the amount of uncertainty or uh, difficulty involved in comparing things. But you can't compare 80% of X and 30% of Y without knowing the relationship between x and y. So if it is 80% of x say and 30% of y and suppose it is a data sufficiency question and you are told that x is greater than y. 
Can you answer whether 80 percent of x is greater than 30 percent of y? Yes, because 80 is greater than 30 and x is greater than y. So, 80 percent of x, 80 percent of x is what? 80 percent, this of essentially represents product. So, 80 percent of x is 80 by 100 into x. So, this is the product. Percentage is essentially a fraction of something, basically a fraction, uh, fraction into some value. So, 80 by 100 into x and 30 percent of y would be 30 by 100 into y. So, if x is greater than y and 80 is greater than 30 and x and y are, uh, uh, then you can directly say that 80 percent of x will be greater than 30 percent of y. So, this would be enough if you know the relationship between x and y where x is greater than y. Now, if you have something like other way around, suppose it is given that uh, x is less than y, suppose x is less than y, can you answer that whether this is greater or this is greater? In that case, you cannot cleanly establish which is greater because 80 percent of x might be greater than 30 percent of y even though x is less than y because if their the values are close enough, say basically if y is 100 and x is 90, then 80 percent of 90 is 72 and uh, 30 percent of 100 is still 30. So, it depends on how close their values are, how uh, uh, much of a difference is there. Based on the values of x and y, you will, uh, you can, uh, uh, the uh, relationship between this would change. So, always remember fractions, uh, percentages represent fractions, a so standardized fraction and whenever you have say x percent of y or z percent of y, it essentially represents a product of a fraction with a total number as such uh, or an absolute number. So, if I say that, uh, uh, this person scored 90 percent score and the total marks were 600. So, the what I am saying is that she scored 90 percent of 600 marks in her exam. So, 90 percent of 600 marks would be 90 by 100 into 600. So, how much is this? This is 9, this is 6 times. So, this is 540. So, this is basically a way of standardizing somebody's score by if you have to compare that, okay, this person scored 90 percent of 600, this person scored uh, 80 percent of 200. So, you can't score uh, compare 540 uh, with 160, right, because somebody has attempted lot more papers than another person. So, that is why you are comparing percentages. So, in this case, basically, when you say 90 percent of 600, you are implying this of you should just convert it into a multiplication side. 90 percent is 90 by 100. So, the actual expression is 90 by 100 of multiply, replace it by the multiplication sign into 600, which is the value of which the percentage is expressed as. That is basically what is a percentage. Now, let us take a look at some easy questions. We will be delving deep into percentages. So, do not worry, you will get more comfortable with them. But basic understanding of what a percentage is. So, we are asked what is 40 percent of 80. So, what do you mean 40 percent of 80? Convert this 40 percent into 40 by 100 percent basically means per 100. So, this is 40 by 100 of what do we do with the of? You multiply, uh, change it into the multiplication side and keep 80 as is. So, 40 percent of 100 is 40 by 100 into 80 and what is the final answer over here? You uh, can cancel of 1 0, you can cancel of another 0. So, this is essentially 4 into 8 that is 32. What is 40 percent of 80? The answer is option D 32. Very simple, just remember that uh, any x percent of y change the percent by dividing by 100 and uh, change the off word into a multiplication sign. That is all you have to do. Now, let us take a look at the following question. Is A percent of N greater than B percent of M? So, what is A percent of N? A percent of N is essentially A by 100 into N and what is B percent of M? It is B by 100 into M. Now, when would this, uh, when can we answer? If I know that A n is greater than B m, then I can answer this question or if it is less than B m. So, I need to know that the product of A and n is greater than or less than the product of B and m. If I can establish that relationship, then I can know for sure which one is greater. A is greater than B. So, if A is greater than B, what can you say? Again, uh, here you need to know that all of them are uh, positive numbers, without that it would be difficult for you to establish any kind of uh, uh, relationship between them. If you know that A, B and N, M are positive, only then you can actually establish because in products, if there is a negative sign, the sign uh, uh, inequality sign changes as such. In this case, we will assume that all of these are positive numbers. So, the first statement that you have is A is greater than B. If A is greater than B, can I say that A, N will be greater than B, M? 
No, I need to know what the value of n is also. If even if a is greater than b, a n need not be greater than b m. Consider suppose you have uh, a is say 80 percent and b is say 30 percent, but you have 80 percent of 100 and you have uh, 30 percent of 1000. So, 80 percent of 100 would be 80 and 30 percent of 1000 would be 300. So, in this case uh, a n would be less than b m. So, the answer would be false. But if you consider say 80 percent of 100 and 30 percent of also 100, then the relationship would stand. So, it depends entirely on what is the relationship between n and m also. So, just uh, using statement 1 alone, I cannot answer the given question. Now, consider statement 2 alone. Statement 2 says n is greater than m. Now, using the fact that n is greater than m, can I say that a n will be greater than b m? No, because I need the relationship between a and b as well. So, in this case, without knowing the relationship between a and b, I cannot answer whether uh, uh, a n is greater than b m. So, just using this alone, I cannot answer if a n is greater than b m. So, statement 1 and statement 2 alone are not uh, sufficient to answer the given question. But consider them together. If uh, a uh, both statements are true, then what can I say? If a is greater than b and n is greater than m, if both of these values are greater than both of these values, then a n will have to be greater than b m. Now, if that is the case, using both of these statements together, I can answer the given question. So, the correct option to choose would be option C. If I consider both of these statements together, then I can find out the answer of the given question. Always remember, be very careful whenever you have percentages because percentages imply product and for product, you need each part of the product to actually establish any kind of a relationship in that product. So, this is basically how you answer questions of this topic. Please take the accompanying concept test. Thank you for tuning in.